We're at an auto show today. Just happened to stumble upon it. A lot of really cool cars. Today we're discussing about Coinbase. That's why I'm in blue. Yes, Coinbase is adding new altcoins. That's right, they're now officially going to have over 100 pairs. That's quite a bit. So let's discuss about everybody's favorite exchange, hint, not mine, I hate Coinbase, but it is what it is. So some people are excited about this. I'm sure the people that uh, their projects are getting listed on Coinbase, you know, the Coinbase effect, every single time an altcoin gets listed, it starts to go up in price a little bit. Uh, that's uh, that's a pretty cool thing. So let's discuss about this further. And man, I went to a car show today. I was just walking in a park and a car show just happened because of July 4th, but I didn't know about it and it was super cool. So some pretty awesome cars. I'm a huge car guy. Like if I had money, cars are the things that I would buy. I don't care much about everything else, but I do enjoy cars. And speaking of that, look at this Porsche. It's not part of the auto show, but look at this. It's so cool. Yeah, Brian Armstrong could definitely buy a lot of these. And look, it's its older cousin right over there. Oh, I love the 911s. So Brian Armstrong has promised to almost 725,000 of his followers on Twitter that he will list as many. Ooh, hoo, hoo, look at this. Oh, man. Let me show it to you. Oh, the real star came in. I think that's a 1950s vet. Hold. Look at this bad boy. Oh, ho, 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 man. It showed up late to the party. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I love, I love old classic cars. I love sports cars. I love exotic cars. I just want a car. I want a car. I want any car. I'll be happy with any car. It gives you extreme freedom. America. That's all today is about. Freedom. Liberty. So, uh, Brian Armstrong, the multi-billionaire, has promised that he wants to legally list as many assets under the sun as possible. And that's why he's on a mission. Uh, where really all of the other exchanges, I mean, Coinbase is kind of playing catch-up game, but that's because they had a different strategy the whole entire time, while everybody else was just, yeah, let's list most assets, not every single one, because there's definitely some scams out there, and some aren't even, you know, they don't have enough volume to even be worthy of listing, because it costs money. Just like the bank loses money through paperwork and through other fees, if you're a non-paying customer and you don't utilize your bank account, uh, well, the same thing happens with exchanges. Changes. If there's a coin that has very little volume, it's going to get delisted. And look at this vet. Oh man, it is in a bright neon green. It's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. Now let's start. Oh yes. Wow, that was a crazy color. I didn't want to film it for too long because people were walking and every single time I get my camera out, they're probably like, oh my god, there's so many. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, boy. Oh yeah. They're coming in, they're coming in. They're all late to the party. I mean, it started like an hour ago or whatever, but I'm sitting inside because I, I can't take live music and I can't take fireworks because of tinnitus. So that's that's what we have to do. But uh, yes, Brian Armstrong wants to bring coins to everybody. Really, Coinbase is a lot more freedom now that they're already past the point of no return. They're past the IPO. They've got a bunch of money and they know that it's just gonna be bringing in them money. Any any project that has decent volume that's not gonna get delisted on most exchanges is worth putting up on Coinbase. And a project that gets put up on a Coinbase is obviously gonna go through the Coinbase effect. It's a win-win for both situations, for the investors, for the developers, for the clients, for Coinbase. So everybody's happy, I guess. And they said that Coinbase is asset agnostic. Just because something is listed doesn't mean Coinbase is putting its support behind it. It just means it's legal to do so, and now it makes business sense. So there might be some projects where they disagree with the opinion, but they want to have a laissez-faire or free market, which in some ways I believe Brian Armstrong it's kind of like Amazon and Whole Foods. A lot of people said, you know, Whole Foods used to be this crazy good company. The CEO really cared about his employees. And ever since Amazon took over, it kind of went a little bit more of the capitalistic route. And even though the CEO still down deep in his heart believes 
He has to change the world in a positive way. He wants to sell fresh food for a great price, actually overpriced, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, a lot of the employees say it's changed drastically and many have left. Well, the same thing with Coinbase. I'm sure it used to be a fantastic company, but in order to please its main investors, well, there's still stories every single day of people locked out with hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's right, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So thousands of these cases, Coinbase doesn't care. And they're gonna ban your account. There's a list of coins that are most likely gonna get listed, but some of them are VE Chain, Ampleforth, Fetch, Ocean Protocol. Yeah, there's there's a few decent ones. There's a few weird ones in, in the list, but uh, these are just some of the ones that I'm picking out. Horizon, did I say Theta Network? Kava, Helium, Hedera, Digibyte, Uma. Uh, Brian Armstrong says he's looking into more than 100 altcoins in addition to what Coinbase already has. And you have to remember that they first go on a different platform and some will go on the main Coinbase. There's, you know, the professional side for the traders and then there's the main Coinbase for everybody else. And if it does well on the other platform, then it comes over to Coinbase because they just want to do a test project first. So. That's that. Bitcoin's doing all right. Market cap is below 1.5 trill, but Bitcoin's at 36K, so. Thanks so much for watching today's video, guys. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm filming this on July 4th, but most likely we are going to get to discussing it tomorrow. You're going to see it tomorrow. So hopefully you had a fantastic July 4th. Remember, always protect your ears. Fireworks can, uh, can unfortunately get quite loud. So enjoy the beginning of July. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you guys, as always, tomorrow. Thanks for all of your support. Bye. For some reason, I couldn't get my photos downloaded correctly, so I'm just going to show you if you're interested in cars. Yeah, look at, look at all these cool ones. I love it. Immediately, I went to the fire truck. Yeah, that is so awesome. This one was one of my favorite, 1934 Ford. This was also one of my first favorites, a Toyota Land Cruiser. I think this is the first gen from the 1970s, worth quite a bit of money. A 302 Mustang, I think from 1987. Uh, this was something else, but the inside was pretty cool. An old Vet. Yeah, this was all right. This one was kind of cool, not my style, but, you know, maybe someone likes that. Look at this. I think that's a Ford Thunderbird. 64. Whew. And Mickey Mouse is driving it with the dice. Look at how clean. This one was one of my coolest. <laughs> yeah, this this guy just rolled in and he stole the show. Even though this car may not be worth like that that much, it's still worth a lot, I'm sure. I think it's like 40,000 or whatever. It was it was a pretty interesting car. I've never seen this before in my entire life. It's a brick. Yeah, look at that. They have uh, extra seats back here. So, uh, it's super tiny inside. And here's more vets. There was a bunch of vets. You know, it's 4th of July, so I was so interested in the new Stingray. I like that they put up the hoods. Here was another Stingray putting in. Yeah, another one. Bam. So many of these. Marka. A lot of nice people. This one was autographed. It was a special edition. Uh, a lot of nice people, a lot of the owners were chilling. This guy, yeah, that's the owner to the left, he was super nice. And there was another guy who actually told him, hey, you know, uh, one of your pipes is leaking or whatever, and da 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 So he was an expert, and he, he told him exactly what he should do. And, you know, there's a lot of really well-educated people at these car shows. They know exactly what year it is, They just by looking at it. I, I'm not too big into classic cars, but I love them. So I, I don't know that much about them, but... Uh, they're freaking awesome. Yeah, Hurst. <laughs> this one, I think it was a vet. I have no idea what kind of car this is. I only thought about a vet because of the license plate. Kind of looks like one. Uh, this is the Marka vet. The one that was, yeah, this guy was super cool that he showed how it was rebuilt. 
Nice. And then this guy wasn't part of the auto show. He he just came to look at the cars. He parked off to the side, but of course, come on. He he came with his kid, a 575 Maranello. Absolutely amazing. Look at how small that gear is. <laughs> the shifter, yeah, that's that's crazy. Wow, absolutely beautiful car. And then this was a pickup truck. Uh, this one had a nice interior. Pretty nice for a pickup. The dad mobile, the Land Cruiser. <laughs> it's a hybrid. It burns gas and rubber. And then there's me. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Just happened to stumble upon it. Yeah, happy 4th of July.